Welcome back. So, we're just in time, five and a half hours late, to late join the yearly Classical Arena. I did play a game over lunch, um, actually a couple games over lunch, um, but I've got quite a few places in the standings to make up. You see, I've got, I'm in 905th place, my opponent's in 1295th place, I believe I have five tournament points, and hopefully uh, I can improve upon that. So the comical thing about this event, um, if anything comical can be said about it, is that um, everybody's trying to score tons of points, and to do so you need to play quickly, even though you've got 10 minutes um, per player per game. You're by no means obligated to use all of your time. Also, if you do go berserk, expect that your opponent might not, and that might actually slow them down. So it's possible that going berserk could cost you in terms of tournament points because your opponents are moving slower. So I'm daring my opponent to take here and triple my pawns. Because I don't care. Alright. So yeah, we'll see how this proceeds. I like the fact that both players have chances here. Um, obviously triple pawns are not something you would typically aim for. Um, but it does allow my pieces rapid development. And it's kind of difficult for his knight to simultaneously attack more than one pawn. Um, so this is going to slow down White's initiative on the queen side, if he ever had one. And meanwhile, I can start focusing... Um, so, oh, I forgot that hits the h-pawn. Well, we're letting a pawn go, guys. Bummer. It's just a pawn. I had intended knight d7 against that move, um, and completely forgot that knight d7 would leave um, the h-pawn unprotected. So now my opponent has a knight on a good square. Now he doesn't. Um, but at the same time, I'm still able to be effective in some ways here. Yeah, no, you're right. It is an outpost. Um, I'm just saying that being a pawn down and having an outpost and having doubled pawns, while these might be things you'd be concerned about in an hour long game or a half hour long game, um, in the context of a rapid game, these things are somewhat insignificant. So I'm not really too frightened by any of this. Even though I probably should be. So I've kind of got a control or some sort of bind on dark squares over here. His knights uh, on the side of the board where there's nothing really going on. Um, Oh, I suppose he's actually going to exchange queens. And I forgot that knight takes queen would protect the pawn. Thankfully, we didn't go there. So let's get out of the way of this business and start preparing moves like rook b5 to g5. Um, so he's threatening a knight fork on d7, which kind of forces me to play my plan right away. Um, unless I got some other killer tactic, but I don't think so. Yes, there are other moves in the position, like I could play either rook to d8 and try to slow play this somehow. Um, but no, I prefer the more direct, less subtle approach, which just brings the rook out and over, bring the other rook up and over, put the knight on f4, and maybe if he's careless, maybe I get to take a rook in the corner. Probably not. Um, 
just try to give my opponent some practical problems to worry about. Now, of course, this position is kind of ridiculous. Um, maybe I need to start thinking more objectively and less hope chess. Um, where's the fun in that? I guess the fun's in winning. And winning by having earned the win as opposed to having gotten lucky. But, I don't know. Like, early on in the game, I had the choice between going for an Italian opening or going for a two knights defense. Um, and if I wanted more imbalances, I probably should have chosen two knights instead of the Italian. Um, my opponent played the Pianissimo, which is, like, the least exciting Italian opening ever. And if I wanted a draw, I could have it, but I'm not interested in the draw. Um... Okay, so we gotta protect our we gotta protect our pawns. Um, I don't see anything wrong with rook e7, so I'm just gonna play it right away. Obviously, you can't play knight e5. I just take it uh, with my queen, so this discovery isn't something to worry about. Uh, if I could get in f5 favorably, that'd be cool. It's probably not going to happen. Um, so now he's trying to put some pressure on the king's side. g4 is going to follow. Um, yeah, I guess my attack is a bit too slow over there. I don't really have an attack over there because I'm not going to sack material uh, like a madman. Um... So back over here we go. And then we got to pile on to the, either the D or the E files. So, Rook E4. You're talking about this, right? You want me to sack my Rook for the pawn? Oh, yeah, no. E5 has been a long time in coming, and my opponent just completely refuses to see it. Um, he must be going for something tricky or trappy or just is completely oblivious. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the longer he prolongs this e5, the more chances I have for counterplay. It's like if he takes on g6, I take back and then play rook f8. Uh, and then I'm active. So that's the plan, guys. Um, we'll see just how well the plan goes. Pro tip, don't spend your temp eye on h4, h5, h takes g6. Uh, if you're spending three temp eye doing that, and at the end of it, I've got an open F file and you haven't gotten anything, other than some concept of like king safety, but who cares? Um, then this might have been a waste of time. In the same sense that my rook lift going back and forth is kind of a waste of time, but it did provoke him to play g4. So maybe I should be less critical and like try to play good moves. That'd probably be a good idea. So if he moves the knight, I can take the queen. Um, and then he takes my queen, I take his rook. So my discovery is more powerful or potent. Um, and now, now we get to have some fun. Obviously his queen's not going too far. Um, but just being able to poke my queen this far into behind enemy lines here is pretty cool. Um, so I've got many squares that my knight could move to. Multiple choices of how to utilize my rooks, and I still need to commit to something and play it. Um, 
Yeah, I shouldn't push g5 to anchor the square because um, g5 weakens my king too much. It's just kind of a waste of a move. <coughs> yeah, you're right. White's just falling apart here. Shuffling his queen, moving his pawns. Uh, he did try to lift a rook, but it just didn't quite work out. Um, so I have to give him credit for trying. Um, okay. So now I threaten two different knight forks and the pawn on c2. I don't know which is going to be the actual target here. Um, also, rook f3 might be an idea. I expect rook e to d1. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to follow up, but um, I don't know. Just like, what's position is crumbling here? It, it's looking ridiculous. Actually, if he does rook e d1, I take the rook and then fork, and that's one way um, I can gain material. Uh, which wins an exchange plus the e pawn, getting me back my pawn, and I'm up an exchange. There might be better. Um, if he plays rook uh, cd1, same deal. Okay, queen e3. Uh, I think I have knight f3 here, right? I mean, it's kind of obvious. So, here we go. Oh, wait. So the point is that it uh, protects my queen, but doesn't really gain anything. Um, that's interesting. Knight f3, king g2. Oh, king g2, I take the rook. Knight f3, king h1. I don't really have a good follow-up. It's crazy. It's absolute madness that I don't have a winning tactic here. Um, I mean, I've got knife three and queen c3. It's just... That's... <laughs> really amusing that there's just nothing here um i've got queen c3 threatening knight of three later but he just plays f4 um i think i do need to lead with knight f3 though i'm not sure how to follow but i do have an advantageously placed knight I could always, like, bring my queen back around or something. Um, okay, so if I trade queens, I can win the e-pawn, which is not exactly what I've been hoping for, but it wins a pawn. If I play queen c3, everything's still up in the air. He plays rook e2 or rook d1. Um, I don't really see a way to continue attacking, but everything's still up in the air and it's really scary. I could maybe bring my queen via f6 to h4. Um, Oh wait, no, if I win the pawn though, if I trade queens and take on e4, he just doubles his rooks, I have to double my rooks, and he can pin, uh, gang up on the pinned piece. So I have to um, retreat. Yeah. Uh, queen c3 is the pragmatic choice. I just wanted to see if there's some way I could win it outright. You have to look. And I didn't find it. Um, it's probably not there. Well, I guess most opponents it's probably true that streaming um, makes playing a little bit more challenging. Against this guy? I don't know. <laughs> 
Um, so we're going to go with the aforementioned plan. Just move back around. Uh, note that his king isn't going very far with the rook on e2. I was more worried about rook d1, although I said rook e2 first, because it's, it's the more predictable move. Um, it like guards both pawns on the e-file and keeps pressure or on the second rank there's two pawns um, and keeps pressure uh, on the e-file with this idea of pushing the pawn. Note that e6 loses to queen h3 mate. Um, so he's probably going to play king g2. He might move the rook. Actually if he moves the rook I might, yeah, I win material, right? If you go, actually, yeah, if the rook moves, I just take it. Or I could check and then take it. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was the case. But yeah, thanks for ruining the surprise element there. Um, he might still play it. He might do king g2. He might try knight f4, trying to bluff me out of play queen f, queen h1. Oof, man. I almost said queen f1 there, and I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. Um, four, three, two, one, and time. All right. Well, that was fun. So yeah, I could have played the two knights defense instead of the Italian. That probably would have been the better choice, um, given the tournament situation. All right, King's Gambit. Here we go. Let's see. How do you do this again? Is it bishop c4? Is that the one I do? I think that's the one I do. I'm not afraid of this. Back in high school, I was playing in a uh, tournament one weekend, and some dude played this against me, this particular line. Um, and I played bishop e7 and bishop h4 check, and I didn't know what to do because moving the knight out uh, was kind of a problem with uh, the bishop needing to be defended by the queen. Um, Tic Tacs? Yeah! Tic Tacs! Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that works too. So this is a good opening choice given the tournament situation. Okay, yeah. Get ready for the next game. Um, but yeah, somebody played that line against me and I realized, I even deliberated a while after, before playing Bishop E7. Um, Wait, is there not just d5? Okay, I don't know what's going on in that game. Um, but here we go. <laughs> that was a good opening choice. But yeah, I, I think I lost that game after a long, difficult fight. Um... And so that just impressed upon me how strong that particular line is where that check is permitted. Um, maybe it's not objectively strongest, but man, it's got all kinds of practical chances. Now, should I play g6 like every, uh, everybody else plays? Um, no, we're going to go knight f6. <coughs> To the line I've like halfway studied but I know almost kind of sort of the theory ooh whoa that's kind of fun um so yeah 
Oh, what the heck. Let's be G6 now. Okay, thanks, Fate. I'm like, pretty sure there was G5 in that position. Black was rated 2,500. But that's a Lee Chess rating. Not Fide, not USCF, not whatever. Definitely not BCF. Um, so, maybe I should just get accustomed to the fact that high ratings don't mean much. Okay, that's a pawn. This is like, you'll see this in the book. I forget if it was Beating the Sicilian 2 or Beating the Sicilian 3 or whatever it was. Um, maybe it was Pandolfini's book about opening traps. Traps and zaps or whatever it's called. But yeah, no, that was it. I forget if it was Traps and Zaps or Traps and Zaps 2. But this queen fork recurs in every opening ever. And so when you push e5 or d5 or c5, you got to be thinking, you know, have I completely neglected my development? Do I just really love pushing pawns? Um, I'll give him something to think about. I'm just going to play queen d2 and we transpose. Or maybe he plays knight d2. But either way, I've taken some time off his clock. Oh, I do have... <laughs> I mean, if I'm crazy, I could consider sacking the rook just to complicate. That would be completely crazy. Um, but yeah, knight d5 does protect the queen. Just has a slight downside. Man, I didn't think he'd think so long about this. I mean... Anything other than queen d2, and I've got this threat just looming there forever. So, queen d2 is the obvious, reasonable move. Oh, but now I can drop back queen e6. Okay. Hmm. So now do I trade on e2 before we can move his knight out? Or do I like having my queen just out in the fray? Yeah, okay. Yet another transpositional possibility. Um, although the bishop's now on d2 instead of c3, but after we exchange on a6 and he plays queen e2, um, that's similar. I guess he's just trying to find a way to castle. And it hasn't occurred to me until now that I've actually been preventing the possibility the whole time. Man. You'd think I would figure these things out before playing the moves. Alright, is he going to play c4? Nope. That's not c4. Okay. Well, we're going to go back to the whole... Actually, he still can't castle. Um, uh, yeah, that's just castle. And if he takes, I take back, and he wins my pawn, and I take his rook. Any takers on whether that's going to happen? Any takers? Going once? I'm kidding. I don't bet. But man, if we had Zug's bot in here, the betting would be very real. You get all kinds of Zug bucks. Um, Alright, so... So now what? Well, I think now I just intend to put my uh, knight on e3. Um, or maybe I want to get my bishop out. Yeah, I think I'm practically winning material with this move. If not actually winning material. Um, there we trade, and, I mean, yeah, this is creating all kinds of threats. Worst case, I'm still forced to liquidate on e2. Um... But I don't think it's going to come to that. So I'm thinking bishop takes, bishop takes, rook moves, bishop d4, rook f1. Um, I don't have a mate. But then, after like bishop d4, rook f1, bishop c3, 
he can't move any of his pieces. So, there's that. I don't even know if I want to provoke Rook F1. But, yeah, it's really difficult for White after taking Bishop takes Knight, Bishop takes... Oh, he's not going there. Um, well, this just wins material. We'll see if he spots it. I think he's planning on this. Boop. Okay. Like I said, good opening choices. Um, for getting your way back up from the bottom of the tournament. Oh, well, this might be an easy win. He's got 30 seconds to make a move. But it's not going to be h4. Probably not going to be a4 either. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're in 352nd place. Man, at this rate, I'm going to get, like, so far ahead of first. They'll have to invent 0th place just for me. Oh, okay, here we go. Real opponent. By real opponent, I mean somebody who has a higher rating than I have. All right. Ooh. Okay, let's go. Really? Is that the line you really want to play? Also, can I play bishop c4 here? This is going to get me killed, but I need to know. I need to know if this is playable. Why do I need to know? Because if this is playable, man, is this going in my tournament repertoire. It looks too cool not to play. Um, and if it does get me killed, oh well. It's just an online game. Um, so do I play d4 or do I take or do I play d6? d6 looks crazy. I want to take. I'm not really afraid of anything here. And then I just develop the knight. I mean, yeah, the losing an online game doesn't have nearly the same consequences as losing a game that takes many, multiple hours. It's easier to lose just an online game that is just done, over with, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. So yeah, that's what I had planned as soon as he moved the bishop is to check. He might be able to get away with king d7. Um, probably not, but... Who am I to know theory? Um, okay. So... I'm pretty sure there are multiple good moves here. Pretty sure there are multiple good moves. The inclusion of d5 is very much to black's benefit uh, compared to bishop c4, queen h4. You know, you're probably right about that. I really like my pawns, but um, there does have to come some reasonable limit as to my pawn grabbingness. Um, if I play d4, we trade here. I take his bishop. Um, so that's not happening. Can I just castle? Am I going to get a chance to castle this game? Yeah, for sure, um... My grabbing the pawn, I'm not even up material, but my just being greedy here, um, 
I'm saying I'm not up material because, I mean, that bishop's not going to survive. Um, it's possible my being greeting might have cost me the ability to castle. Meaning I'm going to effectively be playing down a rook if he manages to stop me from castling. Um... I don't really have... I don't know, my protection of d4 is pretty weak. Um... And I'm concerned he might play knight a5, although, I mean, what's the worst that happens there? Okay. Um, wait, I can castle kingside. That's unexpected. Um, well, I think that's what we're doing. Because queenside does not look like any party. Um... So, I think I dodged a bullet somehow. Okay. Now I just played d5. Um, he's got to move his knight. I take, he takes my queen. I take, he takes back. Do I have anything better? D5, I don't know. D5, knight e5, knight takes, queen takes. I don't like it. Um, D5 just seems like completely the wrong thing to do in this position. The right thing would be if I could somehow develop my remaining pieces and use that development advantage. Um, I don't know, to induce some kind of weakness. Uh, or not development advantage, space advantage, just wanted to say. Um, looking at uh, queen d3, queen b5. Queen b5 looks like my most reasonable try, although it's... I don't see what it's doing. Queen d3 sets a trick uh, with knight g5, but he's going to see it. And probably also respond knight b4, and I don't have anything there. Um, yeah, I'm just... A tempo down. Well, knight b4, queen d1, and, well, no, he takes a2. Um, d5 might not be so bad. It looks like a waste of a move, though. I don't want to waste moves. Okay, so... Uh, Seek, you know that I'm not an admin, right? There's nothing I can do for you. to just finish my development. Even if I could, I mean, I don't know, it's always contentious to do some sort of administrative thing because there's all kinds of other administrators that each 
they they need to work as a team and i can't just be acting as a lone wolf doing whatever i want to yet have to be part of a team um So I can't just reverse another guy's decision or something. Yeah, I just recommend that if something happened wrong, you have to go through the appropriate channels to get it resolved. Um, So, I'm not sure what I'm threatening other than maybe this pawn, maybe rook ae1. I want to grab the pawn. I really want to grab it. It looks like a very grabbable pawn. Bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes. He's not winning this. Oh, he is. Never mind. That's not a pawn. Um, so maybe, maybe I played rook e1. Maybe I played rook d1. Maybe I throw in d5 just to confuse everything. This might actually be the moment for d5, although he checks me and he's winning the pawn still. Um, Man, this sucks. <laughs> okay. Well, there's nothing on the E file, so I'm going to develop to D1. Oh, did I miss this? Well, okay. That's kind of a shame I missed that. Um, hang on. I think I can take F4. I think all the magic works itself out, and taking F4 is actually fine here. I take F4, he takes F3, I take F3, he plays G5, I take, he takes, I take check, he plays King H8. No, his knight's hanging. Yeah, we're taking this. I got two minutes 45 left. I think I'm okay to take that. That's the sort of thing I would actually like to see tactics trainer puzzles include a little bit more of if that were possible. <laughs> that is a tactical nightmare. Um, Right, so there's that variation as well. So I take here. Okay, I'm surviving this. Um, so we rook lift. And the key is that the rook's on f8 and he's got this cannon pointed with the queen in front. Um, it would have been stronger with the rook in front. So now we just line up all the pieces on the king side. <sighs> that was intense. Um, man. Okay, so now we have the end game. You know, I'm going to offer a draw even though he's not going to take it. Oh, he took it. Nice. All right, next game. Yeah. I mean, that got to a point where we could fight that out for another... Uh, I had two and a half minutes, he had like four or five. We could fight that for a good seven minutes, and he could maybe score an extra point or two in the tournament standings. Or we just take the draw and play another game. Definitely, I wanted to do the latter. Even over the board, a good percent of the time, it would make a sense to just offer and accept a draw there because there really isn't much left to be had in the position all right 
This is an opening, right? Maybe. Um, I forget. Uh, wait, am I supposed to have my knight on c3 or d2? Eh, whatever. Okay. I think this is by transposition a King's Indian attack. Although I don't like this thing he's got going on h4. It's really uncomfortable. Um, let's just tuck the king away. Alright, do I play a4? It looks crazy, but... Eh. That's never stopped me before. Um, okay... Where am I going? Okay, here we go. Knight to d2, intending g4. Okay. Um, well, I'm rewriting opening theory as we speak. This is complete nonsense, but in this particular position, um, it might actually be okay. I mean, how often do you do this? Can anybody name any opening where this happens? Um, okay. Um, not gonna sack the pawn. That'd be silly. Unless I play g6. All right, here we go. We're all in, guys. All in. Um, this is going to be potentially fatal, potentially disastrous, potentially awesome, but you don't bet, you don't put all your eggs in one basket just for that. Um, so. We're probably in some reversed something or other. Okay. Well, if I take that, he's going to do F takes. Um... been in this boat before. Well, he's going to do f t Oh, he didn't do f-takes. Um, I've actually been in a position very much like this before. It was very much a sinking ship um, last time it happened. Okay, I don't know what the heck that's about. Uh, that's no good. At least it looks absolutely hideous. I do not approve of it. Um... So I guess I just take it, right? Uh, I take here. This seems somehow sane. Um, okay, and now we win an exchange, right? I don't have better, so we'll just grab an exchange, you know. No big deal. Okay. He's trying to intimidate me by moving quickly. I've got c2 cover, thank goodness, and e2. Alright, have a good one. Um, so now I just wait for him to forget that I'm attacking stuff, and the rest is history. I don't dispute that c2 is very loose in this position. Whoa! Okay. 
Yeah, that's one way to play. I can't trade queens. Uh, or rather, if I do, that loses material. Um, but now I've got f7. He's going to throw an e2 at some point. Um, if he sees this, which he didn't. Okay. So, um, we're making a comeback, guys. Making a comeback. Queen a8. Uh, I suppose that would have worked. Yeah, I guess it's difficult to adapt. Um, when you're the one making all the threats and then suddenly you come under attack, that can be difficult to mentally adjust to. I presume he's been playing much of the tournament. I don't know how much, but maybe I presume too much. Uh, maybe he's just not comfortable with this 10 minute time control. 10 minutes is really quick. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Actually, that was a... we both went berserk, so that wasn't your normal 10 minute, that was a 5 minute. Um, okay, so I've somehow transposed into something. I was going to say I've completely messed this up, but apparently I'm doing okay. So, we'll take it. Uh, this is loose if he plays bishop g5. which he's not playing. Uh, I can check now and get rid of his castling privilege. I don't see any reason to avoid that, so here we go. This is what happens if you play just by memory or by rote. Um, sometimes you'll get into unfamiliar positions and not recognize it. Actually, you can't... well, no, if I delay trading queen, he just takes e7. So, I'm taken here. And castle. Mm, I'm sure he's just going to play rook e1, castle by hand and stuff. Um, and that's okay. I can only be so greedy. Oh, I should have played bishop by 5. Can I still play it? Bishop five, bishop c two, c four, um, c four. This is pinned. Bishop there. He plays d four. Duh. Okay. So, just develop. You know, I missed my chance. That's okay. Other chances will eventually arise. Um. I have no hurry to take that. He's given me e4. In fact, now this makes it trickier for him to play bishop c2. And if he's really careless, uh, like plays knight h4 or something, I got check and then I take the rook mate to follow. Um, so he's got to find a way to develop that doesn't involve moving his pieces. That's not an easy thing to do. Definitely not easy. Um, wait, so if I take d4, he's got to take my knight. Because otherwise I get a clean pawn. Wait, I might be confusing myself. I probably am. My key point is that if he doesn't take my knight, eventually I'm going to get to play knight takes d4. But if he does take the knight, I've still got fun stuff I can do. Um, oh. Yeah, trade off all your active pieces. Sure, why not? So, he's probably going to do bishop takes and then do knight takes. Uh, wait, no, I mean pawn takes. Because um, he still needs to keep this square covered. Um, 
So pawn takes is the only way he can recapture. Um, but yeah, I've made this really uncomfortable for white. Um, where is he going to put his knights? Oh, one of them is probably going to e5 soon. Unless I can put, uh, prevent that somehow. Knight g4, h3, check, king moves, check, king moves again. I don't have any mate. Okay, well, we'll just take this. So if I don't take it, that's actually going to go away. Um, and it doesn't harm me to give this check either. Okay, so that's an active square for the bishop. It does prevent immediate mate ideas, but it ensures that this knight moves, say, to f1. I can chop f3 and have an interesting endgame to follow. Um, so most likely he's just going to play knight e5. I play c5, he plays f4. I take, and I'm not sure where we're going, but I kind of like it. Um... So I'm not sure where this is going either. I play this because I'm intending a4. Without a4 it's kind of silly to play a5. Okay, so finally he's dealt with the back rank mate idea. Uh, I still get to play a4. So this anchors these pawns on dark squares. Um, I might still have ideas with like bishop h3 follow it sometime. Uh, looks like that's not going to happen. Um, Okay. I guess I have bishop here, so I should try to open this up. Uh, F2's the target, but that doesn't prevent me from creating other targets if they show up. So, I've got a bishop hitting that. Very soon I could have a knight there. Could maybe get my rook on e2. There's all kinds of ways I can hit that. I also have the possibility of just trading an f3. Oh, but he might not do knight takes. He might do king takes. Um, okay. So bishop e3 is the idea, if he has time for it. Um, so he's got bishop e3. He's not losing the pawn outright. Well, actually he is. Um, I lied. Because after he pins my bishop to my rook, I have bishop b5, uh, protecting the rook. Still, it's tricky. There are ways to go wrong.
Okay, he's just electing to give up the pawn to get the pin. That doesn't help him. So unless he can somehow simultaneously unprotect my knight and like, pin my bishop all at the same time, um, this isn't going very far for white. And I still got, like, bishop takes either knight with check to get me out of this if I have to bail. Which I don't think I do. Um, also fun could be this idea. Alright, do I just play f6? I mean, where is this knight going? Do I play g5 from win material? Um... So take, rook takes, I don't win material. G5, I don't know. It's tricky. He's intending knight d7, that's the idea. Um, so maybe I'll just drop the bishop back. Or maybe I play d4, knight d7 anyway. Just allow it to happen. I don't know. Let's just keep things calm, simple, not have to deal with sudden attacks on our pieces. Um, and if he plays rook c1, I just drop the bishop back another square and just keep retreating. We've taken our pawn, we've damaged the king's side. Rook e2 will follow at some future point, but I can be a little patient. And develop all my pieces and then resume attacking. Um, actually, Rook C1, I've got an ID4. And um, maybe that's the way to go here. Because that Knight F2 is kind of weak. Now, there is that exchange sack possibility, you just try to confuse me. Uh, get opposite colored bishops, except I'm up in exchange at a pawn. Um, I don't know. But if he does nothing, I've got g5. Um, so he's got to come up with some idea. Probably the safest thing to do is just knight f3. Go back. Um, I'm not trapping a bishop, although it would be really cool if that were to happen. Um, also, if he doesn't play this, I have bishop d4, and then I can take this pawn, and then take this pawn, and you know, once you've taken all the pawns, um, pretty sure that's. I don't know, pretty close to a victory condition. Alright, so I've got knight... Oh, sorry, I've got g5 if I want it. I'm pretty sure I do want it. I was looking briefly at knight f2, but that puts back where we started. Um, so here we go. The knight's responsible... Or the bishop's responsible for protecting the knight. And, um... Yeah, that's that. Hey, so we joined, oh, what was it, half hour ago? No, more than that. Oh, let me check. How long ago did we join? Oh, one and a half hours ago. Um, didn't think I'd been going at this this long. Hmm. I was pretty sure I joined when there was... Uh, two and a half hours remaining and now there's well anyway do the math um, I didn't think I've been doing this as long as Nightbot thinks I have I think Nightbot's mistaken on this one I think it's just going for an hour but yeah we've been climbing the ranks very quickly is the key point um, 
check. Possibly I had better than that check. Probably not, but possibly. It would not have killed me to spend a couple extra seconds looking for something else. All right. Now he correctly spotted that there was a snipe for. Um. But evaluation's kind of important too. Can I play F3? F3 knight moves. F2 knight moves. I mean. F3, probably G4. F2, King G3 is probably the way to go. We're doing it, guys. Uh, this is ridiculous. Nice. Okay, he knew I was serious about winning that. Um, so he conceded. All right. Here we go, King's Gambit number three, if I'm counting correctly, which I'm probably not at this point. All right. No. There's a slight tactic there. So don't play Knight F3. <laughs> not that tempo. Now if Queen G4, I take F7. We saw that in the previous game, we'll probably see it again. But not this game. This game we have an opponent who can see two moves deep. Uh, that sounds like a band name or something, two moves deep. Somebody get on that. Um, so, I was thinking, like, I don't know, E5? I'm supposed to know this. It's my opening and all, apparently. Um, but yeah, it's just fantastic. This King's Bishop's Gambit, the line where you play Bishop C4 right away, is just amazingly resilient. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'd recommend this site, Lee Chess. Um, it's really good for players who are just looking to, I don't know, play some casual games. <laughs> it sounds really cruel, but it's what people enjoy doing. Um, people don't enjoy playing competitively. So if you want to kick back, relax, and play some games, this is the place to do it. Wait, am I trapping a queen? No, I'm not. He's got queen b4. Um, man. How come I'm not trapping any of his pieces? I need to develop. Um... Okay, now this actually helps develop. This is not the wrong direction. Um, oh, right, right. So if he goes queen d8, I have bishop g5. And then if he actually plays f6 um, to block that attack, we could play, though, not f6, but knight e7. Either way, I've got something going here. Actually, this is a whole lot more than something. This is just absolutely crushing. Goodness. And by crushing, I mean winning a knight. Um, cool. Okay, I've got to take a second just to analyze what in the world happened here. And by me analyze, I mean I just have no idea. So Stockfish, go analyze the thing for me. Uh, note, I still have my Freedom Gauge plug-in. Um, that's what I'm calling it, but, uh, that's my way of coloring the evaluation bar to look like something out of a video game. Uh, so, queen, or bishop c5, right, so bishop c5 is not the way to go. Um, 
Now, I mean, you could dispute whether or not this is terrible for white. I spent, well, a long time ago, I spent a little, quite some time analyzing this and could not crack it. Um, definitely figured out that that's out of the question. But, um, I mean, that's all up for debate. Let's see, did I mess up here at all? It's saying that my, oh. Yeah, don't play the King's Gambit, guys. It's a terrible opening. Yeah, it's, it's just refuted. It's inaccurate. So that was my inaccuracy that game was F4. Um, it's a horrible, terrible opening and whatever. Trust the engine with your life. Yeah, I got an interesting question on in the Q&A recently about engine evaluations. Um, and they showed the same game having two different valuation scores, or rather two games that had the same moves um, evaluated differently. And I had to go back to the drawing board and look up, like, okay, if they have different evaluation numbers, um, what does that mean? And I looked up the definition of that score that's returned by the engine. And that definition is simply, this is the evaluation from the perspective of the engine for the, I'm sorry, this is the engine's score for the position from the perspective of the side to move. So literally the definition of that evaluation is this is the engine's value for the position and so by definition it's correct um that it's discrepant um i don't know like it's correct that um both evaluations for the same position are the correct evaluation because that's what the engine said <laughs> Uh, oh, whoa, really? Okay. I've been here, done that. It's been like, I don't know. Um, but no, I've definitely had this position before. It's been a while but I'm pretty sure I can play this. Um, oh, dare I go into that endgame? Actually, I might want to just keep my knight on d4 and play c6, force him to exchange, and... Uh, okay. He's trying to ruin my fun, guys. Fun ruiner. Um, so I might play bishop c5. Yeah, bishop c5 it is, I think. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, my point was that I. Um, this question in the QA had to do with. Um, are either of these evaluations incorrect? And I had to come back with the answer, no, they're actually both correct, even though they're different from each other. For the same position, both evaluations are, by definition, accurate. Um, so that was special. Um, so I'm trying to force him to move the knight so he can't do knight takes e3 at the end of all this. And now we get complicated. Um, I think I take the knight, he takes my bishop, I take there, I've gotten two pawns, but if I take any interpose, or, I don't know, let's find out. We all zvision the zugs out of this, um, I think I'm doing okay. I'm forced to take here. I don't even know what I'm thinking about there. 
Um, wait. I got to do the first. How did this work out? How am I up a bishop? What happened there? You attacked my. I took a piece. I took my pawn. Okay. Now I understand. I'm like, wait, I'm up material all of a sudden. Um, but no, I was pretty sure in those other lines I was doing all well too. I'm not, like, offended that I'm up material, but I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't see how I won it. Um, that's why I got, like, so outraged there. I'm like, wait, it didn't make any sense. Um, so rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, bishop takes, rook takes. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, this queen's in the wrong spot. Rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes. Um, this actually wins material to take like this. That's crazy. Now, if I take their rook takes, rook takes f2, rook takes d4, rook takes queen. I'm not getting back rank mated. Oh, he's got this check. That's the point. Like, something's not adding up. Alright, so... So here we go. Um, rook takes, queen c4, rook f7, check. It's just not worth doing. Okay, bishop takes, rook takes, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, king takes. I can't win that endgame. That's a drawn endgame. Um, uh, I don't have any tricks. We're just going to have to play normal chess. Gang up in the F pawn, like, I don't know. The old fashioned way. I mean, this wins the pawn. It's just not flashy. It's rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes check. I could do bishop takes check first. I don't have to, but I could. Um. But regardless how you slice this, I'm winning that pawn. And worst comes to worst, I always have this queen f6 to bail out. But we're not going there. We don't have to. Okay, we're going to protect the pawn. C7's already covered. The king covers F7. So as long as I don't do anything retarded, I've got these back rank mate threats uh, I can um, threaten him with. And this is protected, so this position isn't as loose as it looks. Um... So do I do d8 or d6? Doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> do I go a5? Yeah. a5 and I'm threatening e1, and then you can't do anything to stop it. So... I mean, you could play queen f1, and then I play queen e1 anyway. And it's not mate, but, um, okay, we've also got this. I can't believe he missed this, but he did. Um, oh, and in my, ah, bishop f2 would have been better. Ah, okay, but I win. Ah, oh, man, I was feeling so brilliant there, too.
Okay, well, that's fine. When you see a good move, look for a better one. That could have been a long and agonizing endgame. Still winning it, but no reason to go through all that trouble. I've heard that d5 is what you're supposed to play against the Grand Prix. I don't know why. We're going to learn today. I hope this is why. I really do. So, do I just take f3 and play g5? There's no way that that's the right way to go here, right? Let's just develop and hope that the answer presents itself. Uh, it's actually cheese and crackers. Well, I could see why you'd think it might be cereal. So do I have knight f5? Knight uh, f5, bishop takes c5, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight g3. I mean, this looks too fun to pass up. It's probably wrong. Um... Maybe I shouldn't have spent that temple on bishop e7 earlier. Okay, so I've given him the bishop here. Um, is there anything fun I can do in this position? I think this is going to be fun. I think he just castles and I pluck a knight on g3 and... You no, know, that's about as fun as it gets, I suppose. I don't even know if I want the knight there. It might be better to put the bishop there. So the knight on g3 doesn't actually do anything. So if I do bishop there, bishop g4, I take the pawn, takes my pawn, it's boring. Um, huh. So... I don't know, I just feel I should have something here. Alright, d4 it is. Hopefully trading bishop. Oh no, I've got queen takes if he trades bishops. I was going to say, trading there and then g3 would be kind of unpleasant. Um, thankfully it's not forced. I should probably castle before I lose the option. I'm pretty
pretty surprised to see this. Um, here we go. This could be a little bit dangerous. So my idea is I'm going to put one of my knights on e3 and hopefully the other gets to go to g3. Um, right? There's no point in forking the queen and bishop. I'm not interested in getting back. Well, there's no bishop parent anymore because um, the other bishop's gone. But I was going to say, I'm not interested in trading my knight for a bishop in this position. even lot the pawn. That's really weird. I'm just going to continue development. I'm usually the one grabbing all the material, but... Hmm. This initiative looks like it's worth way more than material is worth. Wait, if I check queen ticks, I take his rook. Um... So the queen's overloaded defending both pieces. You saw my reaction time on that puzzle was like 30 seconds. But I found it. And finding it's what matters. Okay. Well, just take another thing. Keep taking all the things until there's nothing left to take. If knight g3, I just take, uh, that's knight. Um, if not knight g3, I don't know where the knight's going. Uh, so this is precarious for him. He can't do rook e1, he can't do rook f1. Okay. Yeah, that was probably his best option in that position. Only because he's playing against me. He wants to help me um, get my way into the top 100. So, uh, when we started this episode, um, we were in like 1200th place. We've made it up to 114th yeah, at this rate. Um, like I said, they'll have to create a 0th place in the tournament. Um, oh, G5. That looks risky. Wait. If I studied this and is the move h4? I don't remember. g5 looks ultra super risky in this position. Holy moly. You can't be serious. Maybe knight f3 instead of h4 was called for. Um, whoops, that would allow bishop takes. Wait, I can take h5. I should probably take it. And then take g5. And then just take all the things. So earlier I was worried about queen f6, 
In this position, I'm really not so afraid of it. So, tactics. Tactics, probably the knight's going to d5 and threatening this kind of stuff, so... Um, good luck. You might need it. And no, that move does not help you. Okay. Do not panic. <laughs> okay, so I'm up a bishop. Oh, hang on. Here's how we make things more complicated. Man, what a game! And by a game, I mean probably some move that. some word that means absolutely nothing like the word game. Um. um I don't know why the word move came to mind there. That's probably because I'm waiting for him to come up with a move. Um, so his everything is pinned. Um, I could take the rook. It seems like an anticlimactic way to finish this combination. Um, on the other hand, what else am I going to do? Could go back and he offers a draw. That's really thoughtful. Uh, might try the next button over. Uh, might have better luck with that one. Um, so if I take g5, bishop g7. Uh, yeah, I don't see any tricks there. Oh, bishop h3, knight f6. I just take the knight. Hopefully that that was a reasonable way to play from here. Um, and he does cover c7. I do, we'll give him that. I um, thought he had some tactics here. Alright, so we're taking this, um, guarding the f6 square. I think he just does bishop g7, and now I have to drop back. But my point is, I've taken enough pawns, and he has no territory. So... Okay, we're just going to develop. Now the rook's active. I mean, this is the sort of position where I'd prefer having um, initiative over material. take there and I guess develop the rook but yeah this pawn on g5 is just amazing and my queen on g4 preventing castling it's just beautiful um, entire position is like a Picasso. Just everything that can go wrong um, in the opening. 
both knights are on the edge of the board, the rook's in the corner, black's not castled, and he's moved the queen a million times. And make that a million and one. Um, so, let's see. Hmm. Am I gonna let my beautiful pawn go? I might have to. Actually, no, this is powerful too. Um So now we could play knight h6 and attempt to develop this knight. Um we might have to, because I'm threatening rook h7 and stuff. Can I play g7 here? Can I play g7? I can. He moves his queen somewhere, and I don't promote immediately. Knight d5 might be better. Um... Yeah. It just completely maximize the utility of our pieces here. So if he plays knight c7, I've got queen d6 check. Um, that's pretty much all she wrote. Um, if he doesn't play knight c7, I don't know how he's moving anything forward. Obviously the knight can't move because queen d7 mate. Uh, this queen doesn't have very many squares to go to. I guess it's only got e8. Um, I mean, this is just crushing. And it must take a lot of willpower for a black not to resign this like every turn of the game. That's some really serious willpower. That's, I guess, admirable from some point of view. You know, I kind of wish there were a trophy for this kind of behavior. Just somebody who just is so stubborn. That they keep coming up with moves, no matter how bad it gets. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's the sort of behavior to be encouraged, but um, in some way it'd be kind of amusing for if such a trophy existed. Man, you guys are quiet. <laughs> I guess that there must be some GM or IM or some really fascinating player who's also streaming at the same time. That's just bad luck on my part. Joining a tournament that has strong players. Yeah, what can you do? Oh, that's fine. I forgot what time it is. Earlier, you guys were asking me what food I was eating, and then, lo and behold, people are hungry. <laughs> uh, well, uh, this fellow seems to be thinking. Oh, 
You're working on a fishing reel. Huh. Oh, now that sounds nice. Yeah, that sounds really nice. Um. It's a meditational thing. So say the Scrabble books. But no, seriously, how am I supposed to fill time? Oh, um, I guess I could mention that I've been doing a little bit of learning on the whole machine learning thing. I probably haven't touched on this topic in quite a while, and even when I did touch on it, it was in the context of a coding stream rather than of a chess stream, so probably nobody's heard of this other than me. But, um, anyway, so there's a new machine learning library out there. TensorFlow has always been there, or has been for some number of years. Um, more recently, there's been a new library called tflearn which is supposed to make TensorFlow a bit more accessible for people who don't need all the fine crane, uh, fine level controls um, over every last aspect of how a machine does its learning. Um, it comes up with some useful abstractions that you can use to simplify your coding tasks. Um, to that end, I saw some videos yesterday about this fellow who goes by the name of Siraj. I'm sorry, that is his name. Um, my apologies. And... Uh, wait, do I take F6? Do I take D6? I, I want to take everything. And yet I can only take one at a time. Um, Rook C1 looks fun too. He's got Knight C7. Or just take... E7. That's the easy way. That's the coward's way out. I'm going to do it. I've taken the coward's way out. Um, so yeah, you, you come up with these videos that explain um, in more tutorial, I don't know, in a very really interactive way, um, how it is that you go about using these libraries. So wait, I played g7 here, right? g7 rook takes, pawn takes queen check. g7 queen moves anywhere, promote. Okay, so anyway, like I was saying, um, uh, I, he also makes the code that he presents during his lectures available for download. So you can, instead of having to type it out key for key, um, copy his code and use that as a basis and make sure you've read through it and understand it properly and you can start modifying it and make it do more useful things. Um, so I did um, I did this with one of the projects, or actually a couple of them from his lectures. Um, and uh, I succeeded in um, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to explain this. Um, so everybody knows this fellow Elon Musk, or a lot of people do, um, who's got a lot of confidence in this ability of machines to improve the way that we communicate with each other and retrieve data and make the world's information accessible and useful, which was Google's old slogan or statement rather um, so I'm thinking at this point I just want to promote this pawn and then promote this one and this one and this one um, it's like G codes for machines um, I don't know probably not exactly sure what that refers to, but yes, that's 
it's all inclusive includes everything that machines would learn i guess um boy can i end this game with castle checkmate i cannot bummer oh i'm sorry uh machines is in well ultimately it would be robots that are intelligent but for the foreseeable future it's just going to be machines as in simulated machines that are just run inside a computer um so i guess it'd just be programs or artificial intelligence um i'm sorry i'm really struggling to recall the names of these tests Oh, okay. So I can recall the name of the library, at least. Um, it's called the OpenAI GYM framework, G-Y-M. And it's a uh, developed by Elon Musk. And he's uh, believing in the fact that we can do better at having good libraries that can accommodate machine learning and make it easier for people to come up with, um, okay, we'll try this, to come up with um, appropriate ways to abstract models and um, um, this is interesting. Right now, it's anybody who has to do machine learning prior to this uh, OpenAI gym and TensorFlow and various other libraries, everybody have to roll their own kind of uh, ways of building up collections of data and then modifying and mutating and changing whatever those data collections over time. Uh, so the OpenAI framework is to try to help direct um, efforts in a guided direction that um, encourages good coding practices uh, and code reusability. Um, so, um, without too much um, labor, I was able to produce a bot that passed one of these challenges. Um, well, it didn't quite pass, but I was able to look at one that passed and compare it to the one that I made and say that these were really close and they performed very similarly. Mine almost passed the challenge, but not quite because I just didn't give it enough computing power, but I was at least on the right track. Um, okay, here we go. Fortune favors the brave. Okay, so do I play G5? Do I just go completely ape here? Or do I um, to show some restraint? Sorry, this is going to take a little focus to figure out Seems absolutely crazy for position. Um, still, I'm not seeing any way to crack this. Um, I'm just going to do something sane. Oh, yeah, no, I actually think his king's going to be safe on king's side. I don't have much confidence in this attack. Oh, hang on, he's threatening knight d4. That kind of forces my hand. Okay, well, see you whenever you do come back. Um, so, anyway, there's this all this code reuse. Um, in useful shared libraries that are only going to get more popular over time as machines get ever more efficient at learning to perform tasks. Um, again, I'm using the word machine where a lot of people just use the word AI, so I'm probably misusing 
the words, but sorry about that. Um, But yeah, I was able to form a um, hill climbing AI where it just remembers what was the previous um, champion, what was the previous best um, solution for a problem, just for a generic problem, and tries to improve upon it, um, making naive assumptions that the improvements are going to be incremental changes to the previous best solution um, okay, I'm taking here ideally I'd want my queen on e5 but uh, it's kind of tricky to achieve actually now I'm kind of forcing well I don't know if I'm forcing that capture or not but I have to retake like this and now I can play my rook on e5 which actually works pretty well um, So, um, I keep losing the thread there. But yeah, there's ways you can just um, write programs such that a machine evolves its information over time um, and just gets increasingly better at solving a particular problem. And its solution just keeps getting more and more refined. Um, the more computing power you give uh, the computer. Okay, so if I play a4, he plays c4. Oh, I take his pawn. If I play b3, he probably plays a4. Um, I'm actually concerned about that. Oh, I'm sorry, if he just plays c4, I take it. There's no challenge there. So yeah, here we are. Now I've got my Elkins gun kind of pointed the wrong way. Um, ultimately I want... Oh, it's not going to matter, is it? Wait, no, it does matter. I can't just magically reshuffle this. I'm almost... It's very close to working. Um, maybe I play g6. Try to smash this open and get my queen over there. That looks really powerful. Um... Yeah, I'm starting to make some progress with machine learning algorithms and tools and frameworks, um, which I think is good news. Um, it means I'll be able to do more advanced things with programming in the future. Um, okay, push h5, I dare you. He's kind of committed to it at this point. <laughs> but h5 does not help him, nor does taking on g5. This is the moment where you're like, Oh crap, I messed up. 
and it's just really tricky to recover from that. Um, okay, so maybe I play King, King B1. I've actually been on the losing side of this before, so I know exactly how it feels. Um, yeah, I think King B1's the way to go. Unless I find something like Rook F1 somehow break through faster, but... Um, he's threatening C4. I want to deny that move if I can. So, yeah, I think ultimately I'll be able to come up with um, programs that can analyze much larger data sets and reach more useful conclusions um, once I have a better grasp of the, how to best use these tools. Um, the obvious threat is obvious. It does not make it any less strong. I've been on the receiving side of this one before. This sort of thing you do not forget. Um, incidentally, this is why you don't push the pawn around your king, because you actually need them. Um, so let's see, where was the point of no return, Stockfish? Actually, can Stockfish find the mate? How far back can Stockfish find that this is completely winning? Okay, so back here, it thinks was Black's last chance with C4. Um, uh, King B1 is slightly inaccurate, but um, not enough to actually get the inaccuracy mark. But it's enough to change the evaluation uh, slightly. But I thought I'd just take here on C4 like it recommends. And it's still suggesting taking G5. Even though this turn it's saying, oh, taking g5 is a horrible mistake, don't do it. Here it's saying, take, and then play d3. Oh, because that forces the queen trade. Okay. Now, it's a completely lost endgame, but that's a different matter. That's not getting mated in, like, instantly. Okay, so this is the worst this got for white. Um, I should have indeed gone back to g3. Yeah, this is definitely asking for it. Um, so black is an advantage here, because I didn't want to retreat earlier and I double my pawns and completely ruined my kingside long-term chances. Although here things were even. So previously, f takes... Oh, knight takes is a mistake. I should just capture back the normal way. And, I mean, sure, this is a queen e2 French. I don't know the queen e2 French that well. But this is good. It's still a good position. And assuming you didn't do that crazy capture, which confused the daylights out of me, um... Assuming you just did a sensible move like g6 here. You know, it's just going to develop... Maybe I would have done that. Maybe I would have tried to like play g3 or queen f2 or I mean d2. Yeah, who knows. But this is a sensible position. So where did this go right for black? Knight e7 looked weird. I thought he was going to do knight f6 at some point or anything other than what he actually did. Um... Yeah, so he did something to confuse me. He confused himself in the process. We both got really confused that game and both had little idea what was going on. Um, but hey, we've made it into the top 100. I'm gonna guess that many players have withdrawn out of fatigue and not just, I don't know, 
out of fatigue, out of not having the time commitment to play the whole event, etc., etc. But um, but those who are still here are in it to win it, man. Okay, we got a Budapest. Um, queen d4. I play d5 or d6 here? The answer is probably yes, but I don't know which. Oh, hang on, I don't want to do that. So subtle threats to subtle. Um. But yeah, I think in black is doing okay here. Queen h4 does not work in this position. It looks almost plausible, but doesn't quite cut it. But yeah, I've gotten three pieces developed to white's two. And, oh, queen h4 might be okay now. Yeah, this kind of radically changes the evaluation. Actually, just take f2. That's, wait, no, this is defended. Um, taking f2 might not be terrible. Might be best. If I take f2, king takes f2, but queen h4. Um, it's got to move his king somewhere. We're going to take it and find out where this goes. Um, so at the moment, I'm going to be down a knight if he takes that. If he doesn't, I might be like up forever in a million, but um, by that I mean I'm winning like a rook or a queen if he doesn't take it, but I don't think this king is making it out of this one. Like queen f4, king d3, knight d4 mate. Is that mate? Queen f4 is only moves king d3, and then yeah, knight b4 stack mate. There we go. That was fun. Um, so, yeah, like I said, people are probably fatigued after playing so much of this event. Oh, oh wow. It was all forced. After queen h4, um, like, see, yeah, I saw g3 goes nowhere. Uh, king f3, I don't know. What's the big problem with king f3? Um, probably queen g3 and some nonsense to follow. Um, by the way, if you're playing tournament chess, don't play this way. It gets painful after a while. Um, if you're playing in a tournament, actually bother to figure it out. And by that, I mean, like, over-the-board event where you're having multiple hours per game. You and your opponent combined sum up to um, something more than an hour. Um, even if it's G60. Okay, so that's the thing I missed. But I felt that something was there. I felt that in a game 10-minute time control, that was worth trying. Yeah. Thankfully, it was sound, although that sort of thing's never stopped me in the past. It's a lot easier to just play the games online and uh, consequences be damned um, than it is to go back and analyze all the variations after the game. Okay. So this is the thing I played in the tournament um, back in high school. 
Now the main line is actually bishop e7. And the point is that you can't play f6 or g5 or a knight there um, while this stuff is going on. And so, yeah, white's just got the pawn back. Um, and I think white's fine here. Pretty sure white's A-OK. -okay. It has nothing to worry about. So, I don't know. Do I play rook h4 now? Do I... No, oh, that might... That might drop the pawn. So, we're going to hold on to the pawn. But yeah, this is really difficult for black to get anything going on the king side. And white's taken center. So, this is an exchange that I... Um, I mean, it's not a material exchange, but it's a positional uh, imbalance that... I actually like. Mike gets a really nice center. Okay, his king's a little unsafe, but who cares? And, um, I don't know. I mean, sure, long term these are weaknesses, but Mike gets tons of dynamic play. Um, yeah, over the board I play crazy stuff. Half of it is me just trying to get my opponent out of book. Um, the other half is that I just do not back down when I'm playing games over the board. It's rare that you'll see me find a way to make a position less complicated instead of more. Um, I don't know. It might be you, it might be... I switched... People were saying things were going strange with my mic. So I did switch it from 44.1 kilohertz to 48 kilohertz in terms of just how frequently the mic captures. Um, but from the sound of it, it sounds like that didn't change anything. So maybe what I have to do is up the bit rate and or change um, the video capture rate. I really don't know what's going on with... Um, yeah, there's something really weird going on with my stream. I'm not sure if it's the mic. I don't have an additional mic, so I have no way to test that. I'm not sure if it's um, OBS. I'm not sure if it's my computer. Um, no. It's definitely, um, you're definitely hearing um, something other than what my voice sounds like, though. After a while, people are just going to get used to it. And then, um, then one day, it's going to change again. You just know. Um, so, i going to do this to develop my rook. Yeah. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Eventually people will get used to it if I can't fix it. Oh, that reminds me. I was going to, at some point, um, on stream show that there's a website where it'll, it'll show the pitch of the note that's on your microphone. Um, and so we could use that as a way of testing, um, just, I don't know, like if I could find, oh, I do have a recorder, so I could play notes on the recorder and see how those match up with, um, the notes detected by the website.
Okay, so we're keeping the bishop on this diagonal. Because that's like the key thing going for us in this position. Oh, he's still got knight c4 and d5. and I mean, he can do things. He definitely has options. I've still held back from playing rook h4 as much as I really want to play that move. Um, looks like I'm not going to get to play it anytime soon. So... So, 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 I need something else. If you play c5, I just put my bishop back where it used to be. Oh, well, I said that hypothetically, expecting that there was no way in heck he was going to actually allow this. But, you know, since he did, here we are. Um... So I'm deliberating, do I want to do knight takes or pawn takes? Knight takes is another step forward. It's really difficult to resist forward steps. Pawn takes doesn't really do a lot for me, and it helps him open the c-file. So, I mean, the only thing in pawn takes' his favor is that it stops queen e5. But what if I let tactical considerations direct my strategy? Um, it's usually the other way around. I say what I want to do uh, positionally, and then just the tactics show up out of nowhere to justify it. Um, Still, I don't know. This is a tricky decision. Because that e5 square is really useful, and I don't want to give it up because g3 follows. Uh, shoot. Uh, I guess I'm going to do the slow positional thing. That's really strange for me, but I'm not seeing any tactics that do anything interesting after knight takes. It's too much of a concession, and I don't get much out of it. Um, so here we are. I still want to lift my rook and do all kinds of fun things. In fact, I could do rook h4, king f2, rook fh1, and let the fun begin there. Um, I don't know what he's doing. Whatever it is is pretty weird. Maybe I play knight h4, intending knight df3. I'm still not seeing any tactical knockout idea. Um, okay, I see something silly. It's not that terrible an idea, though. Here we go. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. So... Subtle threat is, like, super subtle. That's absolutely bonkers. And yet, I mean, my bishop's done its role in the center. It's, 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 been, it's had its day in the sun. 
and it's looking for greener pastures. And so, oh my goodness, it's hard to believe that I'm actually playing such a move, but on the other hand, what does black do about it? Yes, it's caveman chess. It's like the most easy to predict threat ever. But what does black do? I don't know. If you know... No, oh, just kidding. Uh, not going to solicit advice during the game. Um, but yeah, if, if he eventually plays king h8... I'm not sure whether I just keep my bishop on this diagonal or whether I try to go through and actually do stupid things over here. Having his knight on h6 is kind of a hindrance to him playing g6 now, isn't it? Um, so the reason I played this back is because bishop e6 was possible the whole time. Um, So I continue with my really crude threat, but I mean he's got to do something about it. And that something's going to involve some kind of some movement over here. He can't just keep all his pieces where they're at and do something about the threat, because um, that's contradictory to be doing things and not doing things. So if he plays f5, I might play knight h4. Um, just hitting f5, trying to make some kind of chaos in this position. Um, another option at my disposal, oh, I was going to say is d5 and knight d4. Um, but no, I think this is the time. Now we strike. Oh, wait. If I play this right away, he plays bishop f5. And I sad. I so sad then. Um, if I do nothing, he just takes on b2. <sighs> I appear to have caused myself some headache. So if I play d5, he takes b2. I move out of the way and I'm attacking two pieces at once. That might be the way to go here. Is there anything I was afraid of? Oh, yeah, general bishop f5 I'm afraid of, but can't do anything about that. Um, oh, right, I was going to sack on h6 and then play e5. Sack, pawn takes, f or e5. Stuff is fun. Yeah, here we go. That was my idea. I hope it works. If knight takes b2, rook takes e6. Does Vishen's Vishen Zug? Um, it's possible that further Vishen Zugs follow. Okay, but no. We're just gonna do this the simple way. And if f5, I take on Passant. F6 I might not want to, which is kind of silly because it's the same position. Um, it's the same resulting position after Lampassant, as if he just plays F6 and I take it. But here I'm more motivated to take it than in the alternative position. So I hit the queen, rook takes, this is still defended. My exchange sack. Um, has not yet come to fruition in terms of um, any kind of tangible dividends. Um, but man, in terms of intangible things, it's definitely a feel-good sack. Um, it's a 
way more comfortable to play the white pieces than the black pieces in this position. There's just so many things that could go wrong here. So, we'll see if he gives back an exchange. Um, he might not. I don't know that he's forced to. Although I am threatening this and threatening that. Um, and I also have B3. Um, it's just kind of silly for him to... Well, it's difficult for him to retain the material. Silly would presume that it's not possible. He might have some way that he could hold on to it. But this gets pretty complex pretty quickly. So, the knight defends the d6 pawn. If he plays d5, I've got knight c5. If he plays knight b2, I have to move my queen. You don't have to, but it would be a good idea. Oh, well, I mean, everybody has their own preference on that. I just haven't enabled that on my channel, because I want control over it, I guess. I don't know if it's worth enabling. It's probably more headache than it's worth. But yeah, thanks. <laughs> we have to allow for equality. No. Allow all the peasants to cheer. Um, okay. I think Rook takes E6 is best. Hopefully I've calculated this right. Oh wait, I'm sacking a rook to win a rook, but, um, shoot, what's going on in this position? I've lost the thread, guys. Thankfully, so has my opponent. Oh, oh, the cheapos are real. The cheapos are so real. Okay, um, oh, he's got queen e3, though. I didn't see queen e3. This is going to be a scramble, guys. Get ready. Oh, I still like this, though. All my pieces are active, and he's got a knight on a3. I mean, how is the knight going to re-enter the game? Um, so... This is an echo of, like, game two. An echo being that this time it actually makes a huge difference um, whether or not I sack the bishop or just win the queen outright. Uh, at least I think it makes a difference. No, it doesn't. Um, I could win either one of those, but winning the queen outright is awesome. All right, one more game, one more game, one more game, one more game, one more game. Here we go. Oh, I'm playing the Grand Prix. Why am I playing the Grand Prix? Okay. Ah! Alright, so... Let's just develop. Pretend that we know this opening. Maybe bluff our opponent. Maybe even get lucky enough to win. Um... Yeah. I'm suddenly not liking this opening so much. So is he going to play g5? No, g5 doesn't work. 
Have I actually successfully played a Grand Prix and not got killed? Because that's pretty cool if I, I'm successful. Uh, let's castle. I castle, you castle, we all castle. He doesn't. Um, okay, so I move a piece twice in the opening, breaking all the rules. Other than castle early and often, which is an important rule. Um, okay. Just going to amp up the pressure a little bit. Just kindly suggest to my opponent that maybe castling might be a good thing to consider doing. Even if you haven't figured out which direction, just prepare. Okay, do I sack? I sack, right? Yeah, so we sack here. And then... Um, okay, I don't have any tricks protecting the knight, so I'm going to have to just take this out right. Still, um, I kind of like this. It would be a lot scarier if this bishop were on a different diagonal. Or the queen, you know. Although it's not a bishop. It's still intimidating. Um, oops, knight d5 does not cut it here. Screw it, we're gonna sack the exchange. Who needs the exchange? I don't. Um, might not want to sack two pieces though. That might be a bit too much. So how do I not sack another piece? Probably figured that out before moving. Um, or just move, you know. Believe in the heart of the position, something. Um, this has got to be okay somehow. I'm the protagonist. This adventure has to be working out in my favor somehow. Well, if I take there and then queen f3 takes here, I do that, that, that. Yeah, I might be sacking another piece. That might be unavoidable. Sacking two pieces seems a bit crazy. Whatever. Here we go. In for a penny, in for a pound, in for two pounds, in for five, ten, and twenty. Um, this is going to be a mess. The only thing that's fortunate about this is that it won't count for the tournament standings. Um, just because I'm playing too painfully slowly. So, materials even for this one fleeting instant before all my pieces get taken. Um, but in this one instant, material is even. Okay, so wait, I'm up three pawns? 
Wait, how did that happen? This is a pretty cool game, suddenly. I'm kinda liking this. Just gotta take my bishop. Um, this is gonna be a complete and total mess. Uh, okay. Maybe I should have done queen f3 instead of retreating. Probably missed an opportunity there. It's okay. It's gonna be okay. Don't panic. Don't panic just yet. Um, all right, well, I see we're playing this for the long haul. By the long haul, I mean the next four minutes, three minutes, something like that. Um, Should probably focus. Or you know, I could just offer a draw. Um, okay, he declines the draw. Offer. I mean, dude, we got 10 seconds left in the tournament. Unless you're going to win the game in the next 10 seconds, accepting the draw offer would be good for your standings. Not so much for your rating. Actually, it would be good for your rating, too. So I don't know why you're not... whatever. It's too late now. It's too late. Now I'm just going to have to win this. If I win this, I'm probably gonna win it on time. Um, uh, let's see. No, Rook and Bishop are a really strong team. I can't allow for that. Um, Bishop and Queen, not so much. Uh, do I exchange Queens? I think it actually is not a terrible endgame. Some people would be terrified to do this kind of exchange, and probably for good reason. I don't fear it, though. So I've stopped c4, stopped a4, I control all the light squares, um, oh, he's got some checks. That's, wait, he's got queen d2 check. Um, I suppose I have to allow it. Oh, that does protect his pawn. Okay, setting a trap. Let's go king. Okay, he sees that attack. Um, hang on, I'm in time pressure. And I went on time. Did I call that or what? Okay, but that was not very accurately played, I'll say. <laughs> okay. Wait, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I was not winning there for for quite a moment. Um, oh. So, this was worse than I thought. Queen a5, and black has advantage here. 
Uh, rook takes e4 was a mistake. Not for the reason, not for the move I played. I should have played pawn takes rook. Um, and apparently I'm able to hold my pawns. And it's good enough. Well, I'm not so sure. Um, yeah, rook takes was a mistake. Uh, it's already a difficult position. I misevaluated this as being equal, and it's totally not. Um, so the last chance I had at advantage was way back here, where he played queen b6, and I needed to play knight a4. Um, I briefly glanced at this. I didn't think it was anything serious. Because queen a7 I saw... Oh, wait, no, I saw queen a5. Um, queen a5 and queen b4 were the things I was concerned about here. What did I miss? Queen traps galore. Well, that's special. Okay. But what's the idea? I mean, maybe it's not a queen trap. Um... It really likes the c4 move. I don't understand why. Oh, wait. No, but then... But then... Oops. My mistake. My mouse lip. Here we go. Okay, but then this... Oh! Okay. So yeah, that's like the five move queen trap. That happens if he brings his queen forward, so he has to go back. Okay, and then, yeah, you just take the exchange and everything's fine. It's all fine. Man, what a mess. What a mess. Alright, well, that's however many hours of chess we played. We just played. Um, let's go back and view standings. There we go. Like I was saying, that's uh, however many hours we played, we just played. It was great. It's a good learning experience. Uh, got to see some openings we haven't seen in quite some time. Um, and congratulations to Minir Manje, I guess, for winning it. Um, yeah, so my standing was at... 51 points for playing, I think it was two and a half hours-ish. So 51 points, uh, guys who won the event uh, finished with how many tournament points? About three times that. So meaning, holy moly. So I went berserk all the time, basically. Maybe all the time, I'm not sure. That's a lot of fives and threes um, and zeros. So maybe he did go berserk almost every game. Um, so that's pretty crazy. Um, our good old friend Lance is in third there. Uh, I've been following him for some time on League Us, and inevitably I had to stop following him because his um, notifications would just completely fill my sidebar, and I wouldn't be able to see what else was going on on the server because he plays so much. He's a great player, but... Man, he's hooked. Um, yeah, kudos to him for taking third. Almost taking second. Yeah, it's quite a tournament. But it makes sense that a master would win. So we got a master, a Lee Chess master, and a candidate master. And then somebody who isn't declaring a title, so who knows. Anyhow, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I uh, hope to see you next time. Have a good night.